Okay, verse 28. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed them, everyone, with the blessing appropriate to him. Then he charged them and said to them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah. Machpelah, I believe. I, I may have said that wrong myself. Which but. is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought along with the field from Ephron the Hittite for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah. There they buried Isaac and his wife Rebecca. And there I buried Lee. The field in the cave that is in it purchased from the sons of Heth. Okay, so we're going to go to Hebrews 11 real quickly. And what does it say? It says here in verse 21, By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying... Oh, well, we'll get to Joseph later. Anyway, so he was recognized for his faith simply in the account that we are talking about now. All the other parts of his life are brushed over by the writer, writers of Hebrew. But he says, when he was dying, he blessed each of the sons of Joseph. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph. That is back uh, a, a chapter or two. It says, um, uh, by faith... Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. That goes back not to the account we're reading now. That goes back to what we read last week, where he blessed Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And as I said, that's the only thing he's remembered for in the book of Hebrews, was his faith in blessing these two sons. And that's what I was talking about with the, the chiasm that I put up there anyway. Um, I, I, I was confused about that, and I, I thought it was this blessing, but it wasn't. But anyway, he's still demonstrating faith even after blessing Joseph because what he's doing here in these verses is he's saying, send me back to the field, but he had already been promised by God as he was leaving Egypt, I'm sorry, Israel, to go to Egypt, God says that Joseph himself will cover your eyes or close your own eyes, which means you're going to die down there and you know, you will, uh, I think it says you'll be brought back or whatever. We're not going to go back and look for it. But anyway, he is saying that, you know, don't forget, take my bones back up there and bury me in the same place uh, where, uh, what is it? Then he charged him saying, I'm to be gathered my people. Oh, Ephraim the Hittite, which is, if you remember the account of Abraham, when he bought that particular cave. And the guy charged him an enormous sum of money for this cave. But Abraham just laid the money. I think it was 400 shekels of silver or something. He just laid the money out and said, here. And so that became Abraham's property for their birth. And it established a foothold that they would return to. So, um, anyway, last verse, 33. When Jacob finished charging his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. You know, it, when you read that, it, 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 you think of like watching a movie of some old person dying and they draw their feet up into, the, you know, they just, it, it's like the fetal position. It's, 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 it's done. And so you get the picture here of that. He's this old guy and he just, you know, just kind of, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if you get the same imagery I do, but I just think of some person like an old folks home. And this is what's going to happen to all of us. We're all going. Well, actually, that's how we're born. Yeah. And when people get, they very advanced in Alzheimer's, that's what happens. Oh, they close up like that? They become very, well, you lose your, yeah, you become very, um, just like in the womb. Oh, boy, I didn't know that. Well, Hedico would know that because that's where she works is in the Alzheimer's section. But, you know, I, I never talked to her about it. She doesn't bring any of that home. It was what? That's what I was told. Oh, boy. Well, I, I may ask her, but I hate to because she, she works all week in this. They have her come in early. They have her stay late every single day. They never leave her alone. And I couldn't do it for 10 minutes. She does it for 60 hours a week. Oh, oh brutal. You no, know, that's if you go all the way through. A lot of people, they die from pneumonia or something. Right, else. right. But I understand that you do. Just like a baby in the womb. I, you know, I've, I've got to say this, and if you ever hear it, it really is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. And you brought it up, and I might as well, might as well share it is I was listening to Jerry Seinfeld one time. You know, he's got that show on TV. But before the show, he always does 
a, a little clip of one of his stand-up comedies, if you know what I'm talking about. He'll, they'll actually be a stand-up comedy, and then they go into the show. It's just, you know, but he did this one. It was so well thought out. Remember, I show you these chiasms, how something is here and then it ends up here. He did a chiasm on life. He says, when you're young, and I'm going to totally blow this, but you'll get the mental picture. He says, when you're born, you know, you're, you're uh, something, and then you get to a certain age and you try to keep from peeing on yourself, and then you, uh, uh, you, you try to uh, impress the girls, and then you try to make the money, and then you are back trying to impress the girls, and then you try to keep from peeing on yourself. And, then, and it was just so well thought out. It was, and it was exactly right. You know, Seinfeld had a way of thinking things through on a human level well, that was... Jewish, you know. Yeah, well, that's just it. He was Jewish, and they have, they just perceive things that are so different, and yet they're so correct. I would never think that way, but it was very funny. Anyway, so now that you mentioned that, that is right. Is it, we just... Uh, yeah. Okay, so anyway... Um, we're in chapter 50. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's been, I don't know how long we've been doing this, but it's since I came back. So, um, I, November we started. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So it's been 10 months we've been w working on Genesis, and that's two hours a week, minus one week. We took one week off. So 10 months times four is uh, 40 times 80 hours, about 80 hours or more of study in Genesis. Last chapter, here we go. Go ahead. Somebody else ran. Okay. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Okay, they're talking about embalming here. That was a Egyptian practice. The Jewish people don't embalm. Uh, do you know how they bury them? What well, we've talked about in here. They, they have take. To bury them immediately. Well, they bury them right away, right? It's very hot there, and yeah, you, yeah. Well, no, sundown. I believe no. Isn't it? No, the sundown was because it was Passover at the time. I don't know if they need to, to bury them actually that way. But what they do is, at least in the old times, I don't know how they do it now. But in the old times, they would put them in a cave, okay, like Lazarus, and they would leave them there for like a year or something. Their body would decay and all that would be left would be bones and that's why I talked about I think it was in here last week they'd have what's called a bone box an ossuary they would pick up the bones of these people and put them in the bone box and they've got they found zillions of these things now I don't know how they do it nowadays I've seen the uh, the graveyards up there but one thing that Jewish people do and I don't know what this I've been told what it means and I can't remember but they if you go into a graveyard in Israel there's little rocks on all of the People just yeah. put rock, and I don't know. There is a meaning to it, you know. That, that when they go to visit, they put little stones or pebbles on the graves. Anyway, that's how they do it. But this this tells me here that the practices of the Egyptians is being followed. Okay, they didn't follow the Jewish traditions or whatever the family tradition was at the time. Now, seeing as how we're in this, I just want to ask your opinion. Does anybody here have any problem with burial or have any problem with? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cremation or with embalming? Or anybody have any problem with any of those? No. Okay, because uh, there are people that are in our church that have come out of the Church of Christ, and if you get cremated, th that's it. You can't go to heaven. I mean, that, it's crazy <laughs> stuff. You know, I, I may have misquoted that, but I believe it's Church of Christ, and they, they still, they still are having tough tr times with their families going through these things now. My logic is people, once in a while I'll get an email and people will ask me, you know, well, is it true it's a sin to get cremated? Well, here's how I look at these things personally, just so you know, because I'll tell you what, when I was in college, the founder of my seminary did this particular course. It was on Christian ethics. And I disagreed with him on like six of the 15 precepts he put out. One of them was cremation. He, he was a burial person. And also R.C. Sproul, who I used to bring up too, he's, he's a burial person. You know. The human body, God has shown that it's made in God's image and that we're treated tenderly and the biblical example is to bury them and blah, blah, blah. And um, it returns to dust. Well, it no returns to dust no matter what you do. And secondly, here is my logic on that issue, just so you guys know this, because you may face this with the family member someday. What happens if you get eaten by a shark? 
you become shark poo, okay? Not to be rude or anything, but that's what happens. Exactly. You know, if you, if you get eaten by an alligator, is that any worse than being cremated? You're, there is, to me, this is just me, there is... I'd rather be cremated. I'd rather be cremated than, you know, almost anything. You know, I don't want to be dug up 500 years from now and um, studied. Yeah, studied or have to have your graves moved because the graveyard's now being made into a condominium. I, so, you know, everything, and the reason why I brought this up right now is because we're reading this, and the guy that we prayed for two weeks ago that I went to visit him at the hospital, he died last week. Thank goodness he met the Lord on 1 August of 2010, almost a year exactly to the day he died. Anyway, he, he had uh, esophageal cancer, and he, he could have really lingered and been in bad shape for a long time, and the Lord was so good, he just took him after three days after being in the hospital. And so, anyway, they're burying him, or they're, they're doing the service right now, as a matter of fact. It just started, and um, uh, I, I told him I can't make it. By the time I get there, it'll be way too late. It's at the tabernacle. But um, uh, he's being cremated, and the daughter is freaking out about it. And so I wonder if she's like Church of Christ. And, mm -hmm. he, he, and they have other issues, the daughter, yes. you know, whatever. But, yes. Isn't Disciples of Christ and Church of Christ that we're a symbol? You know, I don't know. No, they didn't believe that. Yeah, I don't know the disciples of Christ, what they believe. I, I yeah, think it's Church of Christ I'm thinking of, and I'm pretty sure of that, that they believe you must be baptized in order to be saved, and that right. you cannot be, that. yeah, and that, that you can't be um, cremated. And so this is an important issue to bring this up. If the biblical example here is that you can be embalmed and follow a different tradition, then it should be, go ahead. Are you okay if you're accidentally incinerated? You, that's another question. What happens if you're, you know, burned in a, a building or, you know, you're burned up? So, to me, yeah, I mean, and, and I have heard that they make exceptions for stuff like that. That's what I, you know. If it happens on a Thursday, it's okay. Right. Or if it happens in a propane tank but not a benzene tank, you know, whatever. It, it, the body is going to return to the dust. As she said, no matter what we do, it is going to go back to its natural state. None of that has any bearing on the Lord coming and resurrecting us. And None of it. I was going to say, aren't we putting him in a small... That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. Okay. So From a logical standpoint, if you have the traditional burial at sea, that body part isn't all kept together nice and neat like a coffin in the ground. That's right. It's spread across... All over the ocean. Osama bin Laden's all over the place by now. Shark you know? Poo. Yeah. <laughs> Shark poo. So, but that's... I, I'm glad that everybody here seems to be on the same page because if people ask me this, there's not a lot of biblical advice you can give. You can't really... I don't want to lie to people, but at the same time, let's think it through. Let's, but isn't it putting much more emphasis on the body than the soul? Yeah, and you know what? It says in the New Testament another thing about that. And this is a different issue, but um, uh, Paul says that the soul without a body is naked. And so that tells us that the soul survives and the body is less important. But the two, it's called uh, anthro, anthropomorphic hylomorphism, which means that our body and our soul are one. Okay, in other words, in order to be alive, we have to have a body and we have to have a soul. And that is the state of man. It's not a, a three, it's not body, soul, and spirit, as most people believe. It's a soul and a body. And when the soul is separated from the body, the soul without a body is naked. Okay, which means, like it says, um, Rachel breathed her last and she died when she was giving birth to Benjamin. Okay, her soul departed, it says. Rachel, yeah, her soul was departing, she breathed her last, and then she died. That tells us that death happens when the soul separates from the body. Well, the soul is what continues, and so he's absolutely right. Or whoever said that, whoever, that we're putting more emphasis on the body than on the soul. And the soul is what matters. God will give us a new body. Amen. This, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, this corruption cannot inherit incorruption. That's right. We will get a new body that is incorruptible, but the soul is still the same soul for eternity. Okay? The way I look at it, just my simple way of looking at it, is body is strictly clothing for the soul. That's all it is. And like, like we change our clothing when we... And we're going to change it when the Lord comes. I'd never thought of it that way, but I, I wish I'd used that in my... Uh, what was it? It was on the heaven one three weeks ago. The Sermon on Heaven is, you know, our body. And then here's another one that people will argue that the body is, um, uh, when we die, we have a body. And then we get another body when the Lord comes. And one, to me, that's 
not biblical, and two, it's wasteful. But their argument is that Paul says that when he went to his vision, I know a man 14 years ago, and I saw and heard inexpressible things, which, you know, okay. Their logic is that he had ears to hear and he had eyes to see because he saw these things and he heard them. And so he must have had a body. 